Introduction to the Statement of Financial Position By the end of this video, you should be able to define and understand the key terms included in the Statement of Financial Position and the required calculations to work out where these items go. Firstly, let's start by looking at what is meant by the term Statement of Financial Position. Well, it's a snapshot of the value of an organisation at any particular time. This can be taken whenever you like, and it's like a picture. It takes a picture of what the business owns and what it owes. Assets are items which the business owns, and there are different types of assets that exist. We have tangible assets. These are items that have a physical form, or simpler terms still, items that you can touch, and they can be current or non-current. So for example, your building, your machinery, your land, or your raw materials. They're all tangible assets. The opposite of a tangible asset is an intangible asset, and these are assets that have no physical form. Or even simpler, you can't physically touch. For example, a patent or patent, a trademark, a copyright, or maybe a logo or brand, or even customer loyalty. You can put a value on them, but you can't physically touch it. Now, we also have to categorise our assets by something called current assets and non-current assets. Now, current assets are assets that can be converted into cash within one year. Whereas a non-current asset is an asset that will take more than one year to be converted into cash. The opposite of an asset is a liability. Liabilities are something that an organisation owes. There are two different types of liabilities. You have current liabilities, and they are debts that have to be repaid within one year. And you have non-current liabilities, which are debts that have to be repaid by an organisation over a period longer than one year. Let's take a look at these terms in action. Now you're aware of what each term actually means, let's look at how they'll be used on a statement of financial position. Firstly, this is what a statement of financial position would typically look like. Ensure that you understand where these items are being categorised from and look at the different sections that they fall into. Don't worry though too much about the key terms, I'm going to explain them step by step. So in this section here, you can see that all the non-current assets from an organisation will be listed. So you have your building, your premises, you have your fixtures and fittings, and you have your van or vehicles. They're all non-current assets. Now, this will be the net book value after you've taken away your depreciation for that period. So what the asset is actually worth at that time the picture was taken. Remember the snapshot. Now, in that section there, you'll see where it's pointing to in the end column. That's the sum of all the non-current assets added together. You'll soon work out that totals always go on that right-hand side. So there they all are added all together to give you £270,000. In the next section, you'll see all the current assets that an organisation has. Now, typically, you'll find three current assets. You have cash in bank, which is the best asset you can have because it's cash and you can use it instantaneously. You have stock which isn't a bad asset, but the problem is that if you want to sell stock quickly, then you're going to need to lower your price. And you have trade receivables. Now, trade receivables are people who actually owe you money. So your customers that you've given credit to, but it's money that you're due to receive. So again, it's money you're owed in. You sold the problem, you're just waiting for them to pay you. It's also important to remember that any cash a business has could be in the bank or it could be in the business itself has to be recorded as a current asset in that section there. Once again, you'll notice that total column there being added all together. So you see where I've got 110,000 by adding those three columns together. That is the sum of my current assets. The next section is fairly self-explanatory. The total assets is calculated by adding the non-current assets to the current assets. So as simple as that and you get £380,000. Now we're going to move into the liability section. So and see the word that says less current liabilities. Less is a term for takeaway. So in this section of all the current liabilities that you will find in the organisation. So you can see there I've got trade payables and the overdraft. Now remember, they are debts that I have to pay within one year. Now of course, these are things that I've got to pay. So the trade payables is people who I owe, my suppliers who've given me credit and I've got to pay them. 
And of course, the overdraft is a short-term loan, as you should be well aware of, and that's got to be paid back within a year, because that's the definition of a short-term loan. Which then you'll see, when I add them together and get my total, I get 90000 Now, of course, you get to this column called working capital. Now, what is meant by the term working capital? Well, that's a day-to-day -day capital, or money, which is used by an organisation so they can operate. And we calculate that by subtracting your current liabilities from your current assets. Now, notice we use the word current. We're looking at what's in the business on a day-to-day -day basis, a liquidity measure, effectively, looking at how much capital is used to operate on a daily basis. And this figure should be a positive for a successful business. In the next section, you'll find all the non-current liabilities that an organisation has. It's important to remember that this figure is still owed and it has to be repaid. So the bank loan, for example, is the amount that you actually owe. So still to repay, not what you paid already. That's been taken into account for already. Remember, this is what you owe, the snapshot of your debt at the moment. So what you owe at the moment, the bank loan is included there. Now, you get to this column called net assets. Now, we've seen the word net before. Net means total, effectively. Now, that's calculated from subtracting your total liabilities from your total assets. And it shows you the net value of the organisation. So that is what the organisation is worth when you've taken all the liabilities from the assets that it's got. It's worth £210,000. Another thing that the state of the financial position shows is where the money's actually come from. So where has all the money in the business actually come from or where the resources have come from? And this is where it's shown in this bottom section here where it says finance by. Now you will notice that we have the word capital mentioned. Now capital is a fancy term for money. So that's how much money has been invested in the business from shareholders or the owners. And then we have the retained profit figure. Now, that is profit which is being kept back from the previous financial year and put back into the organisation. Now, if that figure's too high, that may annoy the shareholders because, remember, the shareholders like to have their profit share back with them. Now, because this used to be called a balance sheet, this is where the figures actually start to balance. But obviously, now we call it a statement financial position. If you notice that bottom figure of capital employed, look at which figure it matches to. It matches to the net assets figure. And that's because capital employed shows the amount of money that's been invested in a business, so put into the business, capital employed in the business. And of course, strangely enough, that figure actually marries with the value of the company, the net assets, and that's where that figure comes from. So you know if you've made a mistake, those figures don't balance, because that's why they should balance. It's called a balance sheet, and that's one of the methods that you can check your figures. Okay, hopefully you've now got an understanding of the look of a balance sheet and what it looks like, or shall I say step the financial position to use the technical term we need to now use, and you can see where the figures come from. What I advise you to do is you test yourself. Go on to the B Business B Quizzes section and make sure you undertake one of my quizzes that I've created on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Thanks for checking out the B Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, it's at BBusinessB. Also, give the Facebook page a like, it's facebook.com forward slash BBusinessB. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online Hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk, full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing!